One of the things Naruto was known for as a franchise was the tragic backstories of the characters. The two most important characters in the franchise, Naruto and Sasuke, both had incredibly tragic backstories. Sasuke's entire family was murdered by his older brother Itachi and he found his parents dead body with his brother standing over them. And of course Naruto spent the first 12 years of his life completely isolated and alone, hated by the entire village for regions he didn't understand. Obito was forced to watch the his best friend who he gave his life and eye to protect, murder the woman he loved. However, all these characters have one thing in common, and that's that their backstory centers around one core element, and that core element is the loss of a loved one and loneliness. The loss of love and loneliness are core elements in almost every tragic backstory in Naruto. Even characters with relatively normal childhoods like Sakura face some sort of loneliness in the form of bullying experience as a child. There are almost no cases of characters with backstories that don't involve the loss of a loved one or loneliness in some form. However, with the introduction of Kawaki in Boruto Manga Chapter 24, this pattern is completely broken. Even in his very brief backstory that he had given, Kawaki is able to be completely different from any other character in all of Naruto. The flashback opens with Jingen, a member of Kara, speaking with Kawaki's father. Jingen is telling Kawaki's father that once he turns over his son, he will never see him again. To which his father replied, He's empty, not even any redeeming quality, except for becoming my punching bag. He sells his son to Kara and Jingen for money. He doesn't even feel bad about it, in fact he's ecstatic at the amount of money he is making out of the deal. Jingen and Kawaki's father of course give him no say in the matter, with Jingen telling Kawaki, I am your father now. At this moment in time, it is unknown what Jingen and Kara did to Kawaki while he was with them, but we do know he is trying to escape from them, heavily implying he would attack Boruto, Konohamaru, Sarada, and Miki if they were pursuers from Kara. How I think makes this so interesting is that unlike all the other major characters in Naruto, Kawaki was actively abused by his father. Now while yes, there are some pretty bad fathers in Naruto, Mugaku comes to mind, I don't think anyone even compares to something like this. The first shot we see of Kawaki in the flashback is Kawaki lying on the ground, unconscious with a shattered vase near his head. It is also somewhat hinted at that Kawaki's father is a drunk. As I stated earlier, Naruto almost always goes with the typical lost loved one and loneliness approach to his tragic character. However, in this case, they are taking the approach that the ones that should have loved this child are the ones that caused him the trauma in the first place. Unlike Sasuke and Naruto, this child was born into the world with nothing. Naruto was of course originally born into the world with two parents that were willing to die for him, and Sasuke of course had his family up until the events of the Uchiha clan massacre. And while Sasuke's father Fugaku was a bit of a jerk at times, he still had a loving family overall. Kawaki, from what we know at the moment, was introduced into this world with no one. We don't know about his mother, but it is very clear he is quite young in this flashback, and we see he is living with an abusive father. Naruto had created a world without war, and in this world without war, parents don't always have to die. In this new world Naruto had created, two parents won't have to die sacrificing themselves to protect their son from the nine-tailed fox and a young boy won't have to watch as his entire family is massacred by his older brother to maintain peace. Naruto won't allow that to happen. Naruto has solved a lot of the world's big major problems and has accomplished the goal of bringing about world peace, but he has not eliminated suffering. In Naruto's attempt to bring about peace, it seems the small guy and smaller issues have been ignored. While the great hero Naruto is off maintaining peace and maintaining balance between the nations or war doesn't break out, there is no one to stop children from being abused by their parents. It's a great way of presenting to the audience that even this world Naruto has created is imperfect. Naruto and the people under him are trying. Of course, Sakura has her children's mental health clinic dedicated to helping traumatized children. 
But of course, she can only help children that the Hokage is aware of exist. There's nothing to be done about children that are being abused within their own home. The Boruto anime has addressed this slightly as well, but with the obtaining of world peace, other different kinds of issues have begun to appear in the Naruto universe. The Boruto anime has made it apparent that inner village crime is something that happens more often than it used to. The police force seems to be way more active in the village than it used to be now. This is largely due to the fact that people don't have one large problem to solve anymore. Before, people wouldn't commit crimes because they wouldn't want to cause problems for the shinobi that were trying to keep the other villages from destroying their home. Random citizens are less likely to cause problems when you have to worry about a guy like Pain showing up and killing thousands of people on a daily basis. At the end of the day, anyone who was psychotic enough to want the world to burn and want the village to be destroyed was probably a ninja. So all the civilians would want to go out of their way not to cause problems for the shinobi of the village that were working so hard to protect it because that is where they lived after all and they don't want to die. However, now there isn't anything uniting the entire village. There isn't any common enemy for them to share that brings them together so people are more likely to commit crime. The problem in the world Naruto created are smaller and thus harder to notice. There is no possible way to create a world without any conflict whatsoever. There is always going to be some form of suffering. There are always going to be people committing crimes like robbery, murder, and of course, child abuse. Not even Naruto can do everything about that because he doesn't know about every problem going on in the world at once. He could have brought peace to the world as he wanted to, but he hadn't stopped all suffering. Kawaki's backstory makes it clear that there are still problems in the Naruto universe that need to be solved. Kawaki's suffering wasn't because he lost his parents, it was because of his parents. His father abused him and beat him, and you know what, that's something really different and it shows the way this universe has changed. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. Follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And above all else, guys, have a great day.